We've tasted a lot of wines for our viewers. I feel sorry for you because we've tasted so many cheap wines. You said we've tasted a lot of wine for the viewers. Uh -huh. And it sounds very good and like a big self-sacrifice. Uh -huh. But actually I've tasted the wines for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I bring you in on it, it's sort of vicarious pleasure. But unfortunately, Jay, in trying to discover these gems from this supermarket and that supermarket, has forced me to drink very many wines that are not good. Because I want to let you in on a little secret. If the price is too low to be true, it's too low to be true. <laughs> I'll let you in on another secret. There's an old story which says, the more you pay, the better it is. Pretty much works for wine too. Not always, but pretty much. So yes, I, I know we're going to drink good wine today. I'm very happy about that and I'm happy to share it with you. Exactly. I prepared uh, two bottles of wines. One is uh, Paradigm Merlot and the other is Paradigm Cabernet Sauvignon. That's 15 and that one? This That's one is 16. 16. Okay. Are you ready to taste? I am. Napa Valley wines. Could you explain why Napa Valley is uh, that much famous for, for quality wine? That's not an easy question to, to answer. I never ask an yeah. easy question. A very special quality of light uh, during the growing season. Very cool nights mm -hmm. and very warm days. So a very large diurnal range of temperature, uh, which is important for allowing the grapes to ripen slowly, to keep their acidity and to have a long or longish hanging time so that you can get complete phenolic ripeness. The skins are ripe, flesh is ripe, the seeds are ripe in that they are brown and not green anymore. Mm -hmm. The stalks are ripe, meaning that they are also brown so that you don't derive harsh tannins. I think you are really fully ready to talk about today's topic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always the same, right? I have to talk for my, for my glass of wine. <laughs> I can't just get a glass of wine, I have to talk. <laughs> Today is topic about good wines and bad wines. And what conditions can make good wine and or bad wine. Sure. So can I open the bottles? Yeah. <laughs> I felt so sorry for you because I've treated you with a lot of so many bad wines. So <laughs> <laughs> It's true. And you, our dear observers, you didn't care that we taught you about bad wine. You never flocked to our website and signed up for our newsletters. And, and Jay and I had to go through all this trouble to procure bad wine, to expose our livers to damage from bad wine, and you didn't appreciate it. Exactly. Could you tell our viewers to subscribe on our channel and push the like button? Absolutely. Please. <laughs> subscribe to our channel. YouTube channel and like us. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm ready to serve you. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about the Merlot 2016. A beautiful, almost crimson to the rim, ruby red wine with lots of gradations of color suggesting complexity. And now with this beautiful long glass filled to this amount, got the whole headspace here, the whole freeboard for this wine with agitation to develop the bouquet. So now we come and we oh, smell I can the wine. I can smell it from here. A lot of red fruits. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. red and blue fruits, not black fruits. Uh -huh. And you know that this wine has obviously seen a lot of oak, but it's very, very well done. So on the palate, excellent core of fruit. The oak is a bit prominent uh, on entry, but then it, it smooths out. It's got relatively high alcohol. There's a freshness to the wine that's very, very attractive. What I do like is that sort of minerally streak running through it and uh, that, that core of fruit with balancing acidity and freshness. You know, when you make uh, relatively high alcohol wines, particularly from these bold red wine grapes, you sometimes get wines that are somewhat ponderous, somewhat heavy. This is fresh. Very, very good wine. And what do you think about the temperature of wine? No. Excellent temperature to, to consume the wine. I took an extra care yeah. about the temperature. Yeah. Uh, it's very important, you know, we live in warm climate mm -hmm. and we always talk about serving wine at room temperature. But what we have to remember is these things originated in Europe 
and you're talking about European room temperature. Whereas in the new world in summer, you know, they'll bring you a bottle of wine that's warm to the touch. And when you say, well, I'd like you to cool this down a little bit for me, they say, sir, that's red wine. Red wine is supposed to be served at room temperature. Yeah, but not at 80 degrees. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is good temperature. Thank you. The second one? The second one is the Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. In this particular instance now, it's opaque. It is more exciting on the eye than the Merlot uh -huh. and deeper in color. Uh, it looks it looks more intense. So on the nose, it's also a little shy like the Merlot was, but this one now has a few more hints that take you in the direction of Cabernet. There's a slight herbaceousness to it, mm -hmm. not an aggressive green, and the smell on the nose is more black fruits now than mm -hmm. red fruits. So on the palate, a wonderful core of fruit. Again, that minerally character running through it. Uh, the beautiful balancing acidity, but in this case, the tannins are rounder and smoother. That is true. They are higher, but they are rounder and smoother. But it is a bigger wine, and I would argue even more elegant than the Merlot. Yeah. Even though it's hard to describe a wine like this as elegant, because it's a really big wine. And I've checked some information about uh, this wine on Vivino, Vivino application, and it says uh, this doesn't belong to a bold wine. Do you agree? But no, this is for me a bold wine. Yeah, no, this it's a is full a bold bodied wine. wine. Very right? full body. They've done an excellent job of an iron fist in a velvet glove. I love the saying. There you go. <laughs> Hang around with me, you'll get lots of them. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> this is a very good wine. Yeah. Oof. I really love this. It's full bodied, but it just uh, goes through the throat. Smoothly, yeah, right? It's a beautiful wine. Sort of came to the conclusion that what makes a great wine, besides a great winemaker and a great vineyard, is a vineyard that produces grapes that are perfectly balanced at full ripeness. So at full ripeness, they are both sugar mature without being sur maturité, over mature, and all the components are, are also fully and perfectly ripe. Last year I had the opportunity to make wine in Burgundy. It was a beautiful vintage in Burgundy. The guys that make bad wine are the guys that say, I'm not picking today because in this cellar we pick 110 days after bud burst, mm -hmm. irrespective of anything else. And why do you do it like that? Because my father does it like that. <laughs> but why does your father do it like that? Because my grandfather did it like that. No. <laughs> it's a family tradition. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad wine is a family tradition. So you made wine in Burgundy? right? I did. Could I taste uh, your wine with no. our viewers? Um, <laughs> no. They, <laughs> no. They haven't signed up to the website. They haven't liked us. <laughs> no. no. Please uh, subscribe on my channel and click on the like button. <laughs> Then we can taste, right? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Could you name the conditions to be a good wine and a bad wine? That's a difficult one because the quality of wine around the world today is of such a high standard. Really, there's no place for bad wine. But we've tasted many wines together and you criticize them as ah. bad wines. Yes, yes. <laughs> the great wines are vin de terroir. Mm -hmm. Wines that speak of the place where those grapes were grown. That's where you're talking about wines that cost 60, 70, dollars a bottle. You know, on the other end of the scale, There are people, many, many people, that this is a good thing, not a bad thing, who want a glass of white wine or a glass of red wine that tastes okay. But they don't want to pay more than three or four US dollars for it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do we give these people a bottle of wine which is nice to drink for three or four or five or six dollars a bottle? Of necessity then, it cannot be grown on the best land. They're not trying hard to preserve the somewhereness of the wine, the terroir. They're trying to wring as much flavor and character out of grapes which of necessity are relatively cheap. A completely different idea about making wine. We never talk about who the winemaker is that makes the four and five dollar bottles of wine. Mm -hmm. But of course we, we have the cult of the winemaker on making wines like these. And uh, when you explained about uh, these wines, you especially explained about the quality of tannin and acidity, that kind of thing. Are they critical components to, to be a good wine or a bad wine? 
When you're looking for an excellent wine, those are critical components. Not just the level of tannin, but the quality of the tannins. How well integrated the tannins are. Are they smooth and round? Or are they harsh? Are they green? And so yes, to, to make these kind of wines, the tannin is extremely important. Uh -huh. as acidity and that core of fruit. To make the three, four dollar bottles of wine, essentially you don't want tannin. You're making wine that's to be drunk immediately. It's going to have tannin anyway. Mm -hmm. You want just enough tannin that the wine has some structure and some backbone, but you don't want tannin. You want soft, easy, fruity wine to drink. Of course, you'd want more of all of those things for a better wine, but then you have to pay more. So that's the balance. You always said good wine should be shared, but great wine not so much. <laughs> Great wine should be drunk alone, right? That's right. <laughs> Good wine should be shared. Great wine, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Do you think this wine belongs to a good wine category or a great wine category? That's great wine category. <laughs> I shouldn't share this wine <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do bad wine. We did, we <laughs> multiple did. times. We, we, did plenty of, <laughs> we did plenty of bad ones. See how much I'm spitting? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> a good sign. <laughs>